Hello, it's review day on gotukulele.com. Bear with me, I've got a cold, so if I cough and splutter through this, um, have sympathy for me. Uh, and remember, this is just the video review. Read the written review below or go up to the reviews page on the Got Ukulele website. This is just the supporting video. All the detail, better pictures, more information, measurements, that kind of thing, are all in the written review. Uh, I keep saying that. Uh, okay. Review time. This is a model I've featured before, uh, a brand I've featured before, but not many times. Uh, it's a brand that's very well known, but not really that well known for their ukuleles, I suppose. And that brand is Fender. Um, now, I've had issues with Fender in my views of them in the past. Uh, it took me a while to get a Fender ukulele reviewed on Got a Ukulele. Um, and in the past, I'd always found them to be pretty bland, boxy, very generic, almost like a bandwagon instrument. Um, but actually, the last one I reviewed was their current top of the line in their Beach series, called the Montecito, with a solid colour top. Uh, and despite it being a bit quiet, it was actually really rather nice. It was very well made, uh, very pretty to look at, and a really nice pretty tone. This one goes to the other end of the scale. This is their Venice Soprano ukulele. Um, and, you know, again, another beach name for... for uh, Fender. So the Venice Soprano Ukulele in, available in natural red and black. This one is in a red stain and it looks at first glance quite a nice looking instrument apart from one or two things I will come on to but when you get into the, the sort of the more detail of it you realize it's actually a very generic linden wood base wood a plywood body I can't work out whether it's single piece top or back it's two piece sides and it's covered in this sort of red stain that's kind of very uneven, a bit patchy in places, hard for me to show you, but bubbles and uh, scratches and scuffs, and you can see my fingerprints now. Um, it's pretty generic and pretty uninspiring. You get a bit of decoration in that cream um, binding around the top with a bit of black purfling, but nothing else. Um, very generic, really. And quite a few little scuffs and divots and sort of finish marks in it, which are annoying me. Um, nothing more than just annoying me, you know, they're not life and death, but there we are. We go to the bridge, which is nice and small and diminutive. It's what Fender call their no-tie bridge, like they've invented something. It's called the slotted bridge. They've been around forever. Martin have been using them. And it's made of laminate hardwood. That is to say, it's not even a solid piece of wood. It's strips of wood, then cut into that shape. Plastic saddle. There we are. Not much more to say about the body, really. Uh, looking inside, pretty neat and tidy. The braces are really fat and chunky. The, the linings are notched and neat enough. But what it does show me is just how thick that top is, which means it's, it's, not, really, it's not really very resonant. Mm, yeah, OK. Up to the neck, this is made of NATO, which is a generic wood term for the Mora tree. Um, it's made of three pieces, a joint at the heel, joint up at the top. Fender call it a comfort C-shaped profile. I say it's a generic profile, it's a bit too rounded on the back for me, but thankfully it's 35 mil at the nut, which isn't too bad. Um, again, really scruffy sort of chunks and sort of knot marks in it that I don't like at all. Topping that is a laminate wood uh, fretboard, that is to say lots of strips of wood i don't think i'm going to be able to show you this look at the photographs on the website uh it's neat enough in terms of color but it's really scruffy and finish um around the edges here really poor quality control nice bit of shaping i suppose a standard 12 nickel silver frets that are on the edge of being sharp position dots at 5 7 10 and 12 and they're repeated on the side uh, pretty scruffy that actually and I don't like the profile shape past the plastic nut up to the headstock I moaned about the headstock on the Montecito I'm gonna moan about it again and I'm gonna get people in the comments stream going what the hell are you talking about Barry it's a Fender headstock it's supposed to look like that I get that I get that this is the Fender Telecaster headstock I get that the reason for that headstock is it keeps the strings straight I get all that but it's not a Telecaster it's a ukulele um, it looks it looks odd and why do you need to keep the string straight anyway? Does not have bothered Martin or Kamaka or Kanalea? No, what this is, is Fender trying too hard to say you are playing a Fender, or alternatively, it's the buyer be being too interested in saying, look at me, I play a Fender, and I have an issue with that because I'm, who wants to say you play a Fender ukulele? Maybe I'm judging it before I've played it, but I just think it's a marketing style that... 
I, don't get me wrong, I play Fender guitars, I own a Telecaster, I own a lovely USA Stratocaster. I love this shape headstock, not on a ukulele. There we are. It's pretty scruffy as well, Fender logo, screen printed on, uh, some gouges up at the top, that's awful. Ugh. Tuners in line, naturally, but I've really got to spend a bit more time telling you about these as well. Uh, I say that some of these tuners can work out pretty loose and different tensions on cheaper instruments. These are about some of the worst I've ever seen. Uh, if I back the tension off, so here I am on the C string, so I... Look at it. That is... I'll back the tension off here as well. A string, rattling. But then you bring the tension back up and they stop. That is awful. They are really, really, really cheap, generic, about the worst examples I've seen. Um, we'll come on to that again in a minute. <laughs> There's more to say about this. Finishing it, um, they're, they're what Fender call their stock soprano strings. They look like aquilas, but they're not. They're just white opaque strings. And you get this for about £52 in the UK. So it's a pretty decent price and it's certainly going to attract people because this is the one that Grace Vander what's it on America's Got Talent was photographed with on the front of various guitar magazines. Now, I'm going to pause the video now because I'm going to tune this up again because I've just been messing with the tuners. Would you believe there are people who say that I deliberately play instruments out of tune uh, in order to make them look bad? No, I don't. I use a Peterson strobe tuner that's about as accurate a clip-on tuner as you can find, about 100 times more accurate than a snark. I'm going to get it to tune at the nut, but the reason I'm telling you this is because the setup on this, whilst okay at the saddle, and a bit low on the strings one, two, and three is far too high on string four. Uh, and so I want to get that in tune at the nut before I play it because I think that's going to throw out intonation because of that setup. I'll be back very quickly. Bear with me. Okay, so we're now in tune with the strobe tuner, uh, perfectly in tune at the nut. And then something else started happening. Can you hear that? I don't know whether you're picking this up, but can you hear the rattle? This one has really thrown me. At first I thought it was string buzz, but it's not string buzz because I get the rattle when I tap it. So it's something hardware related. So I start trying to isolate it by strumming. Is it, you know, isolate the nut? No, it's still there. Isolate these front collars. No. No, no, isolate the buttons, possibly, yeah, it could be that button. Actually, no, I'm holding the button, it's not the button. The gears, there's something going on, could be a loose brace, something is rattling. This should never have left the dealer like this. Um, that's appalling, I could probably get to fix it, but I've now got to play it for you with that buzz, <laughs> because I haven't got the time to try and pin that down, nor the inclination. Um, as for that high A string, do you think it goes out? Yeah, it's throwing the intonation out. That's in tune. The sound. Uh, volume, reasonable, sustained, terrible, tone, very plinky plonky, generic. As you'd expect from a basswood linden box, uh, it's nothing remarkable. The intonation is throwing it off. It desperately needs a setup. That buzz is horrible and it needs sorting and those tuners need to go in the bin. But it's just generic. playing because all I can hear is that buzzing uh, picked oh dear um, look I'm not 
trying to find things wrong with this. It's doing it for me. The scruffy finishing, that's not life and death. There's a scruffy neck, that's not life and death. The setup is terrible, that can be fixed. Those tuners could be replaced. Um, I don't know why you bother, uh, but yes, you could replace the tuners so they're not loose. Um, the buzz, I'm sure I could pin down and, and uh, sort out. The question is, why would you? Um, I don't think I'd spend any more money on it or time. And what really worries me are the people who are buying these for kids or beginners because they've seen Grace van der Waal with her Fender ukulele and therefore think that this is a good buy. They see the Fender logo and they think this is a good buy and their quality control is woeful on this one. I get that you might have one of these and yours is okay. The trouble I got on, uh, well, I get on all negative reviews when people say, He's saying that this one's got issues. Mine hasn't got issues. Yeah, I get that. I really get that. That's how it works. It's called quality control. It's variable. A good brand will have quality control that reduces the variability. So everyone gets a good chance of getting a good one. This one reached me. It's not a good one. Um, no, I can't, I can't recommend it. For 50 quid, go and find something else. Go and buy a Macala. That's the instrument that you're going to find probably in this price category, probably a bit less money. That's going to do you much better for a beginner than just having to go with Fender because the quality control on this is, is really poor and it's just really annoyed me to review this one and I want it to go away. Uh, I'm not being hard on them. Their Montecito was really quite a nice instrument. I love Fender as a brand. I own their guitars, as I say, but this is... This is just so generic. This is bandwagon jumping. This is trying to make money off people without really caring about things like those tuners and the setup and the finish and the buzz and the generic tone. And no, it doesn't get recommendation from me. I'm not back next week. I'm having a week off because I've got my daughter's birthday, but I'll be back very soon. Got some more interesting stuff coming your way. See you soon. Take care.